G'day. One of the things that I, I like doing in my workshop is cutting helical gears and I have to cut a couple for my uh, world rotator. I'm going to use them as skew gears so I can change the direction 90 degrees and uh, so I, I thought I'd run you through how that happens. Um, I guess the big difference between cutting a spur gear with straight teeth and a helical gear or helical milling for that matter is that as with the, with the spur gear, the cutter just moves back and forth across the blank, you then index the blank, cut again and so on. With helical milling, um, not only does the cutter come along, but the, there's a gear train set up on the back of the dividing head linked to the, the table feed, so that as the table moves, the blank rotates. So if I can... right. so that's as that's moving that way, the blank is rotating around. So there's all sorts of, of bits and pieces to be done there to set up to do that. So when I'm cut, cutting helical gears I've got a couple of things that I use to help me. One is this spreadsheet which I've worked out and it's got all the formulas and bits and pieces necessary to tell me what gear ratios to set up, what the lead is going to be, what the speeds are, all that sort of thing. Okay, um, I've even got a point here where I can put in the gears that have been suggested and it'll tell me what the, the error is going to be in the gears. Okay. For a standard dividing head you use a, a table like this. Uh, same thing applies for this because you're going to be indexing around the thing around the periphery of the blank. What you don't have are these charts and they will tell you what the lead of the of the machine is and what the gear ratio has to be and these, these can be found in machinery handbook and other, other places but these are essential if you want to try helical milling. I'm about halfway through my setup here uh, I've got the, the, the dividing head um, attach the table, I've put in the appropriate gears from my magic spreadsheet. Um, I now need to swivel the table round on a, a, to its, uh, the helix angle of the gears that I'm going to be cutting, in this case it's going to be 45 degrees. I guess to try and explain this a little bit more with a standard dividing head or with st standard dividing head as you'd use it for a spur gear, you'd index round, cut, index round. Here, you do index round, but as the table traverse turns, it drives through here, and this actually moves the the dividing head, and and that drives through to the to the worm in here. The worms are typically forty to one, and that rotates the. The, the blank down here. Um, you then retract, index the appropriate amount and you cut the next tooth. So I'll finish setting up and we'll show a bit of that. So for those of you who took careful notice of the last setup, you'll see this one is completely different. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of clearance issues when you start working at these weird angles. And so I did have a large gear down here to be a, um, an idler gear. I've had to replace that with a small one. I've also had to put a second one in there because what I was finding was the edge of the dividing head was hitting the, uh, uh, the, the column of the mill back there. So I've had to revise that. Table you, you can probably pick up is at 45 degrees to the, to the mill uh, and this is where the universal mill bit comes in handy because I swing the table round and that enables me to cut with the helix angle. Come over here, you might just be able to pick up, there's a, what you'd probably call a scratch pass. Okay, so I've, I've put that in there, and that, that shows me that this cutter is, is tracking along that 45 degree line without any problems. So I'm now going to put the cutter at full depth, and do a few passes, and uh, we'll see how we go.
So a couple of things that I've learnt over the years doing this, and some things I still need to learn I think. Uh, check the tightness of these nuts every so often. With the vibration of the, the machine they will tend to come loose and I have had the situation where I've been cutting away and suddenly you hear this bink as the nut falls off, closely followed by the gear and suddenly that nice smooth curve turns into a straight line. You can see here I've got a keyway and the, uh, the gears are also keyed onto the shaft and that's because when you're cutting like that there's side forces involved which tend to want to twist things around and so you will find that if you don't have something to restrain it um, you may have end up with that wonderful you know something and a half teeth situation because uh, it's just it's moved you may not have moved much you may not have seen it but it's moved the other thing with these gear trains of course is that there is some backlash in there okay um, so you need to wind the cutter out of the cut uh, then then wind back to your starting point then index down uh, otherwise you end up with something like this um, as I said it's one of those things I should have remembered but I didn't so there you go I hope this is a bit of interest to people uh, like all of these topics you can go into so much more so this is only a, a quick overview for those interested in gear cutting I'd suggest Ivan Lowell's book uh, Gears and Gear Cutting I'll put links below but in the meantime thanks for watching and uh, thanks for those who got me interested in gear cutting many many years ago